what's up lazy dog fam hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day today we need to do a little work in the greenhouse we've got some tomatoes we need to step up and then we've also got some leeks in there that have been in there a long time a new variety i've never planted before we need to get those planted in the garden check on our other leeks and maybe even heal those but before we go inside the greenhouse we need to roll up these windows or these side walls a little bit it's getting to where we're getting up in the 70s during the day these last couple of days supposed to get in the 80s later this week and this thing will get too hot if we're not careful and it was kind of designed to be able to ventilate it well and keep it from getting too hot and that's why i like these roll up doors here i won't roll them up all the way and we'll keep them closed at night to kind of preserve some of that heat but during the day coming out here in the morning we want to roll them up a little bit so it doesn't get too hot in there so we we'll just take them like this and probably just roll them up i don't know a quarter almost half of the way and we'll leave them like that during the day and then i'll come out here right before it gets dark or an hour or so before it gets dark roll them all the way down and that heat can be preserved during the night so we can see here it's early in the morning and it's already above 90 degrees in here and we didn't run the heater last night so on days like this we definitely want to roll up them sides a little bit and getting a little bit of that cool air in here in the mornings should have helped to harden off these plants a little bit we'll harden them off more once we get closer to planting time but uh we don't want to get too hot in here we don't want it to be 100 degrees in here just melting these plants so we've got our first round of tomatoes there. I think we planted those about a month ago. So those are about four weeks old. Those are the ones we're gonna be stepping up in a minute. We've got our peppers here. There's a few little brown spots on those, but I think that's from me letting some of that agrothrive sit on the leaves there. It shouldn't be a problem. I don't think it's disease or anything. A lot of them are looking really good, especially those uh, bell peppers there. We've got these Ruiz okri seeds we did a germ test on. I haven't counted them yet, but it's looking like somewhere around 70% germination. So not just awesome germination, but somewhat viable seeds there. I'll tell you more about that on the next video. And this is our second round of tomatoes. We started a lot of our determinate hybrids here. Those are looking pretty good. Got some good leaves on those. And we got our eggplants on the end. So for these indeterminates right here, if it was mid-March and we were done with frost, we could put them in the ground at this size right here and they would do just fine so we can see there we don't have a completely developed root ball yet but we're getting pretty close and because our tomato growing season down here is kind of short things are pretty much done come july for these indeterminate tomatoes that don't really like the heat as much that tend to be a little more susceptible to diseases i want to put a little bigger plant in the ground give them a little head start so that's why we're going to step these up to some larger pots so we've got quite a few different options here as far as all these colorful stepping up supplies that Sunpack sent us. So we've got these trays here, which has the mold in them to kind of hold those pots into place better. We've got these guys here, which is just kind of a sturdier version of what you might see at a nursery or something. It's got the drainage holes in the bottom. This is a shallower tray. And then we have this deeper tray right here that doesn't have the holes in them and then we got all these different color two and a half inch pots here i've already filled this one tray here kind of show you what it looks like i'm going to color code each variety here so i can keep them separated now i think to start off with i'm going to go with this deep tray here that doesn't have any holes in it that maybe kind of preserve some of my fertilizer that i'm feeding these guys if i see that they're getting too wet or staying too waterlogged i may go back to something like this it's got the drainage holes in them so we'll do some testing and see which one we like the best and a lot of people have been asking where can they find these 10 20 trays for stepping up plants and these nice sturdy step up pots here that'll last a long time greenhouse megastore has some of this stuff but I think Bootstrap Farmer has all of it. Greenhouse Megastore just has a few colors of these. So if you want a big color variation, go to Bootstrap Farmer. They have the bottom trays and have all the colors of these neat little two and a half inch step up pots. 
Now because these don't have a complete root ball developed yet, I can't just pull them up out of here like I would want to do if we were ready to plant them. So I'm going to have to fish them out of here with my knife a little bit. So just run along the side there and then I should be able to pull them out just like that. So this should work pretty well with these two and a half inch pots here because we're going to plant these puppies deep. We got all these root hairs right here which will form roots if we put soil around them. So this cell right here is probably an inch and a half. This is two and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this down in the bottom of here and then we'll fill it up with soil and we should have some nice root development there. That's why I really like these pots here because they're deeper. So we'll sit that in there and then we'll just take some more of our pro mix here. I haven't figured out a really good way to do this yet without making a mess, but we'll figure it out. We'll just put more pro mix in there, kind of pack it in there a little bit until we get close to the top here. Just like that. And that will keep growing vertically there, but we'll get a lot more root development in there since we've buried a good portion of that stem. So I think this is going to work much better using this as kind of a catch pan so I don't spill seed start and mix everywhere. And I'm only stepping up eight of these. So I have nine plants per variety or nine plants per row. I really don't even need eight, but I'm going to step up eight. We might give away some. So I'm just going to pick the eight best looking ones from each row and then we'll step those up into the larger pots here. So we'll just fish them out. We'll stick them in the bottom there. We'll fill them all with soil at one time here. Do one variety at a time. Fish them all out. I know a lot of people probably don't appreciate my lack of delicacy when doing this, but these plants, they want to grow and they'll be just fine that label right there so we remember what this one is this is that giant crimson variety from mi gardener that he's um trying to get back going some old seeds there we'll see how it does now we can fill these with soil here we won't waste our pro mix because we'll catch it in this pan and when we water these in a minute we'll wash all the soil off those leaves there so that's not a huge concern i want to get it good and packed in there like that and we'll stick it over here where they shall stay and do the rest of them here now some people may find this kind of time consuming and unnecessary and I'll say it's not completely necessary you can plant this plant without it being in this bigger pot here but this is kind of soothing to me I don't look at it as a chore or anything at all I kind of enjoy just coming out here playing around with these plants here, stepping them up, babying them a little bit, taking good care of them. And you could use a different soil mix here if you didn't want to use more seed starting mix. You could probably be just fine with a potting mix. The seed start mix works really good for germinating stuff. I just already have a bale of pro mix in here. So that's what I'm using just because of what I got. But if you were out of seed starting mix, and had some potting mix, that would probably work just fine too. Okay, that's all of our giant crimsons there. On to the next variety. So we got those six indeterminate varieties potted up there. We've got the giant crimson Kellogg's, Rose, German Johnson, Dr. Wachi, and Paul Robeson. Now these plants look a lot smaller now because they're in these bigger trays. But once they start finding roots or making roots in this new bigger container here, these things will start growing fast and we should have some decent sized plants to go in the ground with in another month or so. And since I don't want to leave this tray here just half full, I think I'll go ahead and step up my sweet peppers here. This X3R pepper, bell pepper, and this Cornito Giallo, those are big enough to go ahead and step up in the pot. So I think we'll put those two right there. So with these peppers, I'm probably going to have to fish those out as well. I can look at the stems and tell they're not thick enough to be able to just pull up out of there. And the difference with these versus tomatoes is that I don't really want to plant these real deep like the tomatoes. You can see there, we don't have a solid root ball developed yet, but the plants are big enough to step up there. 
So what I'm going to do with these is, let's set that down right there. I'll put a little soil in the bottom. Then put my plug in here so that the soil cell from this tray sits about level with the top of this one. And then we'll fill in the top with soil there. So I'm not going to plant these real deep like I did the tomatoes. Just going to kind of plant them level with the top of these new little containers here. And that should be good right there. So my process will go a little bit backwards with this. I'll put some soil in there. Then we'll fish it out. Stick that in there like that. And then put more soil around it just like this. Now, I don't always or I haven't always stepped up tomatoes, but I have always stepped up peppers. So the commercial guys around here, they'll put that puppy right there in the ground. But they're playing a volume game, and if they lose a few plants, it's not a big deal to them. For us, when we're only planting a few plants per variety, we lose a few. We don't have a whole lot of peppers. So I want to take a little bit better care of mine. If I put that in the ground like that, it would grow, but it's pretty fragile, and the dogs or the kids could step on it and just kill it. So I want to put a bigger plant in the ground with a little thicker stem on it so it has a little better chance of survival. All right, we got both those trays full now. So we got eight X3R bell peppers and eight Cornito Giallo peppers added with all these indeterminate tomatoes here. Now, if my wife were in here right now with us, she would ask this question. So I figure some of you might have this question as well. She would ask, why didn't you just start the seeds in these pots in the first place instead of starting them in those little pots and then stepping them up to here? Well, that has a lot to do with germination. Not every seed we plant germinates. So if I plant a seed in this big pot right here, this two and a half inch pot, and it doesn't germinate or the seedling doesn't have a lot of you know, vigor doesn't look very good, then I've wasted a lot more seed starting mix than in that tiny cell. So we use the tiny cells in those 162 trays to germinate our seeds, and we can take the best looking plants and step them up to these big pots right here. It's just a way to kind of conserve seed starting mix for us. Now these certainly didn't have to be stepped up right now. They weren't getting root bound in those 162 trays by any means. But I wanted to go ahead and step them up, let them start growing in a larger container because I'm hoping to time this just right so I've got a nice big root ball here and I can go in the ground with that say mid-March, mid to late March or so. So we started these early to mid-January and hopefully we can go in the ground mid to late March with them. I'm hoping I timed it just right. Only time will tell. But that's the reason I went ahead and stepped them up. You could certainly wait till they have a better root ball developed to step them up if you want to do that or just go in the ground with them. So now I'm gonna give these babies a little splash to wash some of that seed starting mix off the leaves there. Then I'm gonna give them a little shot of AgriThrive here. Get some nutrients going to them. These plants are decent size now, so they should be able to handle a decent little dose of this stuff. And hopefully with these catch trays here, I don't lose as much of my fertilizer through drainage. I'm just hoping it doesn't keep things too wet. And then I'm going to give them one more light splash because I don't like to leave this stuff sitting on the leaves there. Now initially these plants will lean over a little bit like this, especially when we water them because they haven't got a good root system established in their new pots here. But in just a few days, they should start growing roots in this new soil here. They'll stand up. The stems will thicken up there. They'll get nice and strong and there's nothing to worry about. So that's natural. They'll do that for a few days, but they'll stand back up and be just fine. Okay, so now on to the leeks. So these guys have been in here for a long time. This is a variety called Jumper, and I wanted to compare it to this Tadorna leek over here that we've grown many years and we have some growing right now. I left these in here because I've gave some of them away. They're just kind of hanging out. 
they probably need to be thrown away or planted so what i'm going to do is i'm going to plant one more row of leeks we'll see how far we get down the road with this jumper variety here and then if we don't have enough we'll fill it in with the rest of those tadorna leeks there so here's our no-till allium plot and this thing has really started to take off in the last couple weeks with some warmer weather i think all that cold weather we had kind of slowed things down a little bit may make our harvest a little bit delayed but things are popping now in here and i like what i'm seeing our onions are looking really good no signs of bulbing yet but really healthy looking plants no signs of disease on those guys and then we have our leeks right here which have really started to take off lately got a few ruts in there for the most part all these plants here are looking pretty dang good and when things start to warm up a little bit prior to spring for us that's when we really want to start pouring the water to these alliums these onions and leeks here so when we have like several consecutive days of warmer weather i'll let the drip run all night on these guys and they'll soak it up real quick like so we want to make sure we give them plenty of water as things warm up they like plenty of water and that's going to help them grow to maximum size now these leeks right here aren't even close to being ready to harvest the diameter on them is probably a little bit bigger than a dime right now and we don't want to harvest them till they get about the diameter of a half dollar or so what we do want to do is pull some dirt up around these guys and blanch them more because the edible part is that white part that's sitting below the soil there and if we hill them up more like that it blanches more of the leek and we get a larger edible portion on the leek now you can't do this until the leeks you know get kind of sturdy like that you try to heal them when they're small a lot of times it just folds them over too much and sometimes can damage the plant so we wait till they get a nice sturdy root system there and then we can throw some soil to them and continue to blanch them so we get some nice big leeks so i'm going to use my garden rake for this because it allows me to be a little bit more delicate and we're going to pull some dirt up around these guys so we got those babies healed up there and as they continue to grow we'll heal them even more we'll heal them as tall as we can heal them so as those plants get a little more sturdy and can tolerate a little bit more dirt thrown around them we'll do that we'll probably heal them again in another few weeks or so and we'll just see how big a leak we can grow and then as far as those jumper leaks go i left me a little sliver of space right here so i'm gonna go over about two feet one and a half two feet from that row put me in a drip line here make me a furrow put me some 855 down there and we'll plant this other row sometimes winning's losing fast and moving past who is right and who is wrong and sometimes leaving's all i've got even when i know it's not because our love is too strong for that kind of talk to be more than a thought all right so we got that drip line in and i am soaking wet from the knees down as you can see there if something isn't working right with your drip system most of the time it has to do with this little guy right here this filter sometimes i forget to clean those things out i've got a leak there on another piece i got to fix later but i'm not worried about it right now anyway taking that apart cleaning out that filter right there makes a world of difference a lot of times and mine was all gunked up with stuff but i got it clean and everything's running like it should now and we're going to do this just like we did when we planted those other leeks so we're going to take this end of our hoe we're going to tamp down the soil right here really good so we can make a nice deep hole there and then we're going to come in here with the other end of the hoe right beside that drip tape and we're going to make us a nice little indention down there ease that back up so the hole doesn't collapse and that's where we'll be putting our leaks now that we've got our holes made there that one there's pretty deep they're all not equally deep but i tried to get them 
as deep as I could. So we'll take our little leak transplants here. Which look pretty good. Although they've taken forever to get to this size. And we'll just poke it down in there. And we'll plant these puppies deep. Get us a nerd in there. Let's plant them as deep as we can get them there. All right, all right, all right. So I had just enough of those jumper leaks to make it to the end of the row there. So that'll be a nice comparison. Even though they weren't planted at the same time, I always like comparing these hybrid varieties to kind of standard varieties that I like to grow to see if they're worth the extra cost. These jumper seeds cost a little more than these Tadorna seeds, so we'll see if it's worth it. And one more thing about this particular plot before we go. So this is the first time ever growing onions in a no-till plot. This no-till plot is only a couple years old, so I'm still pretty much a novice at this whole no-till thing. The one thing I have really liked about it so far is the lack of weeding I've had to do and the lack of weeds. Not only is it no-till, there are pretty much no weed onions as well. Onions are in the ground a long time down here because we plant them in November and don't harvest till spring. So inevitably, always the weeds end up getting the best of you with onions unless you really, really stay on top of them. But with these, I had to weed them a few times early, but I haven't really had any weed issues. So that's been a big, big plus for these onions in this no-till plot. I don't know if we'll make as big of onions as we normally make. Time will tell, we will see. But it's definitely been easier to grow them in here because we haven't had the weed pressure that we would normally get from turning the soil. The plants look really healthy. I don't know if they'll get, you know, make massive onions or not, but the plants look good and I'm really happy with the no-till onions so far. So I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me in the garden today, getting those tomatoes and peppers stepped up, getting these other leeks planted here. And let me know what size tomato transplant you like to put in the ground. Do you put a little plug, like what would come out of that 162 tray? Do you put a two and a half inch pot, a four inch pot, or an even bigger pot in the ground? Lots of people do it different ways. I'd just be interested to hear kind of what the consensus is on what size tomato transplant you're looking to put in the ground. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to check out our affiliate links below. Lots of good companies that we trust that we get a lot of our garden seeds and supplies from. We just added a new one last week. We added Steel Plant Company to that list. That's where we get our sweet potato slips from. Really good company. We've been using their slips for a long time. They always sell out come, you know, late spring, early summer. So it's a good idea to go ahead and order your sweet potato slips now. If you plan on planting sweet potatoes, I'm pretty sure you can request your ship date. So you're not going to get them exactly right when you order them. You can get them whenever you need them. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. By the beauty of your life